Hi, and welcome to Intro to OCR. I'm Quinn Dombrowski from Berkeley Research Computing, working with Stacey Reardon from the library. OCR is an important first step for all sorts of research projects. Whether you have a computational approach or whether you're working with traditional research methods where you just need to find things within your text, OCR is an important first step. Many, many primary sources are not available digitally, and so you'll need to scan them yourself and then OCR them in order to be able to use them for your research. Um, even computationally facilitated research often starts out with analog. And before we get started with some of the more complicated software options, it's important to note that there's a place here for Adobe. Um, a lot of people start off doing OCR with Adobe. They, they scan their, their texts, and then they run the Adobe um, professional OCR um, just as part of the PDF program. And if your text is in English and doesn't have any complicated formatting, if the text is really clear, you don't have columns, you don't have a lot of images embedding, that, that might be enough, especially if you're just trying to search within your PDFs and not trying to extract the text for computational use. If you've tried to do OCR with Adobe and it hasn't worked out well, we have a few other options to share with you. Abbey Fine Reader is a good option when precision matters. With Fine Reader, you can go through your text and do some degree of training on it. So after you run one page, you can correct the errors that it makes so that when it runs subsequent pages, it won't make those same errors or is at least less likely to make some of those same errors. It provides good OCR quality for complex documents, especially if you have multiple languages, um, non-English character sets, so it can accommodate you know, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, any Cyrillic based language, Greek, Hebrew, um, all with varying degrees of, of accuracy, but generally a whole lot better than you would get with um, Adobe PDF. It can also support meaningful layout. So there's, there's a way that it'll recognize tables. It can recognize irregular columns. And it'll then allow you to export your data still within that structure as a table or as a column. Um, as I mentioned, it supports training and correction. And it runs on AOD, the Analytics Environments On Demand, provided by Berkeley Research Computing. AOD provides you with a virtual workstation with research-relevant software. It's great for dealing with licensing issues, operating system issues, and local space and memory issues. So if you don't want to pay for a Abbey Fine Reader license yourself, they tend to run around $100. Um, you can use the AOD desktop in order to log in, do your OCR, get your data, and log out without having to you know, purchase the software or maintain it on your own laptop. Another option is Tesseract, and it's good for good enough OCR at scale. Um, good enough may vary depending on your project. Um, training is possible for it, but it's somewhat technically challenging, and uh, training data for specific use cases may already be available, so you might not have to train it. Um, for instance, there are projects that have done training sets for legal documents and early modern documents. You really should expect to do computational post-processing with Tesseract. What you're going to get out of it isn't um, isn't the, the OCR embedded within the PDF like you would with Abbey Fine Reader or with Adobe. You're going to get a text file out of it. And it's going to be a text file probably that has a lot of predictable errors in it. So doing some computational cleanup after the fact um, is going to be really necessary. It runs on the Savio High Performance Computing Cluster offered by Berkeley Research Computing. And we're considering doing a pilot of OCR as a service where you could send us your documents and we can OCR them for you and send you back the text documents. And if you're interested, you can see the URL at the end of this video. Tesseract sometimes can work really well. So here's an example of a, a newspaper document with fairly clear text. And it, 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 there's a few errors here. You can see um, July 28 in the middle of the document didn't quite come out right. But for the most part, um, everything is here. The text doesn't reflow the way it does in Adobe or in, in um, Abbey Fine Reader, where the hyphens at the end would need to be um, edited out to merge the words together um, when you reach kind of the end of the column. But it, it does get all of the text. Sometimes, though, it doesn't work at all. So here's another newspaper article that looks really similar, except there's an image on the left, you've got um, this black bar on the right, and uh, Tesseract just really didn't know what to do with that. It's also possible, as I mentioned, to connect with disciplinary OCR communities. So there was a, a Mellon-funded project, the Early Modern OCR Project, or EMOP, that developed some training sets for Tesseract for early modern texts. 
And in this case, um, the, the image on the left just had too much, too many speckles, too much dirt. Um, it just wasn't clear enough to be able to really take advantage of that OCR training set. But it, it did a reasonable job um, kind of catching some of the things that it wouldn't have caught uh, if we just used the, the default training set.